Okay, this video is going to be how to solve the prisoner's dilemma specifically and any game theory game in normal form or matrix form uh, in general. So uh, if you're in my Fordham University uh, MBA class, you will have slides uh, with this text. Uh, so let me just read the prisoner's dilemma. So you and your friend are arrested for robbery and the police have both of you in custody and you're separated from each other. So you can't communicate with each other. Uh, you have two options. Each of you has two options. You can either cooperate or not cooperate with the police. We're going to say that cooperate means that you tell the police what happened, so incriminate you and your friend, and not cooperate would be uh, just shutting your mouth and not saying anything about, about it. So if you and your friend cooperate, you're both given two years in prison. And if both of you don't cooperate, you're given five years in prison. And if you cooperate and your friend does not, then you get 10 years in prison and your friend gets one and vice versa. Let me just go over that last line because a lot of times students will, uh, their immediate reaction is you have that, you have that wrong or you have that backwards. So if you cooperate and your friend doesn't, you get 10 years in prison, he, she gets one. Why? If you cooperate, you've basically incriminated yourself. Okay. Your friend has not cooperated, has not inc incriminated himself. And then the assumption is maybe they don't believe you at trial if you try to testify against a friend. And so, uh, again, this is a, this is a theoretical game, uh, and that would be the logic behind it. So if you're thinking that that's written incorrectly, it is actually written correctly. Okay. So uh, now let me just go over to the actual, uh, the actual game, so the normal form representation of the game. And you'll notice a couple things. Um, put that here. So first thing is you have player one. And you have player two, and in this case, I'm just saying player one is you, and player two is your friend. And you have two decisions. Each player has two decisions, C or DC, and C is cooperate, DC is don't cooperate. And then, of course, uh, you have four boxes in the matrix, and each of those uh, corresponds to a joint decision between you and the friend. And the payoffs are negative, and they're negative because in this game, prison time is uh, obviously seen as a negative. So before I show the steps in solving the game, let me just uh, say one thing about the payoffs. To the left of the comma is going to be player one's payoffs. To the right of the comma is going to be player's two payoffs. Okay. So when you solve the game, one of the things that you don't want to do is try to intuitively solve the game. So for example, look at the four boxes and say, oh, I think that this is the best or that's the best. If you do that, you're you're almost you're almost always going to get the incorrect answer in terms of how you would solve for an equilibrium in a game theory game. Okay, so it may seem rational to you, but the way that we solve a game theory game is is relatively specific. So, first thing you're going to do, you're going to say, "I'm player one," and now I'm going to pretend that I'm going to ask the question, "What if player two doesn't cooperate?" Okay, so you're not going to care about what you want to do. You're going to first try to figure out what you think your opponent's going to do and then make the optimal decision conditional on the fact of what that person's going to do. So pretend you're player one for a minute. If player two plays don't cooperate, DC, then you have two options. You have 10 years in prison or five years in prison. Okay. So when player two makes a decision, then player one looks at to the left of the co uh, comma, left of the comma, and there's, there's two payoffs. Clearly, negative five is going to be better than negative 10 because we're talking uh, five years in prison versus 10 years in prison. And when you've come to some decision, you will underline that decision. Okay. So in this case, I've made the decision that negative five is better than negative 10. I underline negative five. Now, I then, so that's step number one. Step number two, I pretend I'm player one. What if player two plays cooperate? Because I don't really know what player two is going to do. I don't. I don't, really don't know what my friend's going to do in this in this circumstance. So what I need to do is figure out all of the different ways that he or she can play the game, and then what my optimal response is to each of those uh, decisions. So player two, if if he plays cooperate, then I have two two choices: negative one, one year in prison, or negative two, two years in prison. And clearly, negative one is better. So I'm going to underline negative one. Okay. Then you flip it around and you say, okay, I'm going to pretend like I'm player two now. If I'm player two and player one plays don't cooperate, then I look across from my payoffs, and I'm player two now, so I'm to the right of the column, and I have negative 10, and I have negative five. 
Clearly negative 5 is better than negative 10. And if I pretend like I'm player 2 and player 1 cooperates, then I look across and I say negative 2 and negative 1. And clearly negative 1 is better. Okay? Now, the key is, is that you ask those four specific questions. So, for example, you pretend you're one player and ask the two questions.